return the Toys R Us. All right, today we're working on a 2014 CLS 550. And the issue today, it has a coolant leak. This is a twin turbo V8 Mercedes. Diva! And the coolant leak, the customer shows, it's right there where you see it, wet. Follow the line. All the way here behind the firewall. If you look closely, it's still wet all the way down at the bottom in the crevice. The most likely culprit is a valve down in there. Okay, right down there. access behind this firewall and see exactly what is wrong why our leak is coming from this side here the driver's side coming all the way down ending up down here when you see it's wet let's get to it all right getting into this problem is you're going to need to move this here and pull this 14 14 millimeter bolt right there now how do you get there you are going to pull these uh, little retainer clips one goes right there just ease this part out. This slides out of this groove. Okay, this slides out of the groove here. This way you can move the padding and get to the 14 millimeter bolt at holes. After freeing up this firewall, you are going to be taking this part here off. You remove both wipers. Uh, because this car here, the wipers never came off. I had to soak it a little bit with WD-40 and then give it a little pull and get it off. To get this cover here off, it goes up underneath here and hooks. It hooks right in this groove right here. So you're going to want to put your finger up under there and push it up, pull it back, and then over. Right, to get it out of this groove. Right there, this little tail. Right here is where it hooks in. 16 millimeter nuts, all right? Three of them, two on the passenger side, one on the driver's side to pull the wiper. And you'll have some clips. They're Phillips screwdriver, but they're not screws. They're, they're clips. Here they are, look like so. So getting this out, we'll have a better access to that water line down there that's leaking. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, windshield motor out, the wiper motor, and then that'll give me full access to that valve that I need to change. The plastic cover that was under the wiper I just took it off just enough to let it hang down so I wouldn't have to take it off all the way to over there. Right? To take this windshield washer motor off, I am going to take it from here, 13 millimeter, and also this one. Windshield wiper motor system to be out. Okay, there are two clips that I had to pull just now. There's a metal piece that goes under there. So what I did was separate the plastic from over this metal piece you see here. It hooks on around it kind of like, uh, kind of like so. So I had to use my little hook here and tiny flat screwdriver to get 
this piece here over it. Okay, see it, it kind of hooks in. There are two of them. One there and one right there. This allows you to free up the harness a little bit more in this harness. That way I'll be able to unplug it here. Okay. You are going to depress this clip and you gotta be careful with them because sometimes these things here, they, they crystallize after a time. So let's be careful with them. See, here's number one. I'm gonna depress it all the way and slide it off. And depress the back portion there. It does the lifting and you'll be able to slide it off. This is free now, and now we'll be able to pull this up. This little guy here, I believe that guy, you see me touching, is connected to the culprit, which is way down under this windshield wiper motor system here that I'm, I'm about to remove. Once I remove that, I'll have clear access and we'll come back again in video, okay? Two nuts and one bolt. Okay, one nut, one bolt, and there is another nut right here. All right, another thing we had to move in order to get this uh, windshield wiper assembly, the motor assembly out, is this bar right here. Okay, this nut is a 16 or 5 8 just used uh, my ratchet wrench, pull this nut off, and toward the firewall up there under the windshield, there's two dolls. So nothing to pull there. You just, uh, you're gonna ease this out and then just wiggle it a little bit. Wiggle it nice, gentle. Remember your line is right here, so you don't wanna go too crazy because you can crack that very easily. Okay, pull it off like that and then back it out. This valve here is what we're looking to change. We suspect this is the culprit, that one right there. Now, um, I push that through from this side. There are two clips on the plastic housing. Uh, yeah, you can see there, one on the top and one on the, one on the side over here. So I depressed it with my screwdriver here and that other one here, the, the, the lever, and then push it in, into the firewall, okay? And that was how I got this to be pushed in a little bit here. Just, that's how you release it from the firewall. Before you pull stuff, you, you actually wanna make sure what you're pulling is the thing, the part that's responsible for your problem. You don't wanna pull it and then guess. So to confirm, I need you to look all the way down there on that black portion of the fire of the of the car behind the firewall. You will see where the coolant is dripping. You'll see that wet portion right there. I zoomed in, but it's it's um, the quality of the picture is troubling. Okay, right there and right beneath where the valve connects to that small hose right there is where it's leaking. So this is the hose right here that I'm touching where you see the clamp is on to this plastic portion of the valve, okay? 
for some reason, whether this plastic portion that the hose is connected to is cracked, we're gonna confirm that when we take it out, but it's definitely leaking right under there. Okay, and that's a source for our leak today on this CLS 550. 2014 month. Getting, getting that out. And this here is a replacement part. Okay. Where that little hose connects is right here to this little spout. And we believe this is where the crack seems to be because that's where the leak is, is um, displaying itself right beneath this spout from the valve. Here is the line where it connects to the heater core. Okay. That brown looking plastic piece you see back here. That's the valve itself. That is bad. And that small hose right down there. And connecting to that big hose that I pulled off from here. Okay. This is the clamp. You pull back the clamp on the hose, pull it off side this is what you're trying to separate from the front side okay to get that out you're gonna pull out this clamp this spring retainer clip if you look on the new one you'll see where the retainer clip right there is holding in the male portion of the connection. All right, so you get your clip out. It sticks up upward like so. So I took this tool right here with the hook, get it under there and pull it up. And that's how I got out my retainer clip, this piece here. So it's set, set like so, okay. You are gonna get under here this little opening right here right and then you're gonna pull pull up with this hook all right the connection here is a little bit stubborn so what I did after taking out that clip I sprayed some WD-40 to lube up between the two plastics because if you look on the new one there's also a rubber seal in there okay a rubber o-ring so the grooves on both sides shows you it's not a turning locking mechanism. It just goes straight into the two grooves that are opposite. And then the locking retainer clip is what holds the male portion of the connection inside. Okay, so I'm just waiting a little bit now for the WD-40 to kind of soak in and lubricate the two plastic pieces. And this way I can pull them apart. Take out this old one from the back side, and then I'll be putting in a new one. This one right here. Okay, finally, I got the piece off. This is a replacement part right there. And that's the old one. Gave a really, really hard time to come off. The O-ring in there, was like seized on the other plastic portion, which is there. I was getting some assistance. My assistant, unfortunately, broke this piece right there. After it broke, I was able to separate it. Customers headed to the dealer to get this replacement part now on this side. So, see if I can show you with some light there. Upon getting it out, that plastic piece here got damaged. So now that it's got damaged, gotta get that part out. And that's connected to the back of the head, right there on that mechanism. Very difficult to see, but it's connected right, right back there. 
All right, so, okay, so this firewall, I had to take it up uh, right there. You see the head part of it there. Okay. You need to access the part that goes to the back of the head. So I can pull that out and release it. Here's a clear shot of the connection I'm referring to. The hose that loops down, comes up, and connects to this plastic piece here. This is a male connection where it goes into that female piece I was referring to earlier, where this here was seized inside here, where the O-ring is. Those slots you see in that plastic head right here is where the retainer clip holds this piece into the other female section. On the hose, those are two permanent clamps you're looking on. They cannot be removed, at least not so you can remove it and replace it. So on the other side of that clamp, all right, the second piece that is way down in the bottom there. Going close to the back of the head. That's the other piece I'm trying to get out. Okay, that's a, there's a male piece there and it goes inside a female plastic piece, just like the one I pulled this male end piece here from. So the retainer clip is out, but it's stuck, just like how this one was stuck in the other part. This does take some careful pulling to get this firewall piece here up because it's, it's wedged pretty tight back there. That permanent clamp you see there, that's the, the part that I needed to get out, the male connection. So I'm just waiting on the new part right now to plug it back in. And then I'll be able to start fitting this machine up again. All right, so another day on the job. What do you think, boss? I think it's good. Looking all right. A lot of work. Huh? According to you, there's a there's a hole. Well, according to the customer, yeah, and I was able to verify that. So I found the leak way back there behind that firewall. And at first it didn't look like I would have to take it up, but in the end. This is exactly how I was able to get to the problem. And now we're just waiting on a new part to come and we'll be able to solve the problem. Putting in a new part and this piece here as well, okay? I covered the positive side of the battery terminal. That way this heat shield wouldn't touch and ground out on that. So that's what I was doing. Look at my hand, you see all those imprints in there. That's from pressing against the metal and all that stuff there. So it leaves these marks in my hand. The main problem I ran into is I lost a retainer clip that came from this heater hose assembly from the back of the engine. This part here, I also had to change it. My uh, assistant punched a hole in there. You can see the plastic is disintegrating. Okay, from the heat. All right. So this part here was bound to fail somewhere in the future. But the main reason for me changing this part is that my assistant, while pulling on the other piece, punched a hole, the hole that you see there. Okay. 
originally this part here was leaking and I found the leak I'm gonna show you the clamp that I lost is from here okay this clamp comes from the other side it's a retainer clip okay it goes to hold this piece here in place like so on this part to hold this piece here in place it's gonna hold it by fitting into this slot okay kind of like so you uh depress it it'll go down into the slot okay all right so this part is where the clamp came out. It's a Got little lost. silver retainer clip. Looking like this one here, but smaller. This one, the spread apart is about an inch. So the next one I'm looking for is less than an inch. This guy here is the original culprit for the leak. Okay. I'm going to show you originally why this thing was leaking. That's the source of the leak right in there. The leak originated from this hose that I showed you in that crevice behind the heat shield that was coming from this hose and going going um, along the driver fender well on the inside of the engine bay. Now, I identified that the leak was coming down right next to this hose. Upon inspecting the part, there's no crack anywhere here. The crack is way here under the neck where it's joined. I'm going to move it a little bit and you'll see it opening. Can you see it boss? Mm. Pay attention. Oh, you mean like that crack? Right, right oh. there. Okay. That small see? gap. When I let it go, it's closed. But a little bit of pressure on it you see where it opened, right? Uh-huh. So that was the culprit right there. Uh -huh. Why I'm going through all this trouble, all right? So this was definitely the defective part that caused the leak. Finally, we found the clip. The clip? What clip? This is the clip that fell down. What? We were looking on the transmission that it it fell on the transmission but it actually slipped right under the the back of the engine like where the intercooler is mm. where the intake is so that's where it was hiding luckily persistence and a magnet we were able to find this thing so this one here goes This is the clip, All right? Uh, this is how it looks. Is this the inch clip? Yeah, that's one inch, and this one here is less than an inch. Yeah. So this one here is a smaller one of the two. Okay. Okay, so this one here goes right here in this groove. Mm -hmm. In this groove right here to lock it in. Okay, this is the retainer clip for the heater hose on the back of the engine on the driver's side on a 2014 CLS 550. This piece here goes to the back of the engine, the back of the head. So the secondary piece is gonna connect to that heater core line. This new piece, seeing that it is the female portion of the connection, comes with a new clip, a new retainer clip. The okay. male does not come with a retainer clip. Okay. Right there is about three quarters of an inch. The width and the length. It's 
roughly an inch and a half. So it's three quarters by an inch and a half. This is the bigger of the two. And you'll see this is one inch. And this is one and a half inch. All right, and there's our clip, the retainer clip in right there, securing the line. All right, all up and running now. Uh, we're gonna bleed the system with coolant, turn on the heat, let the ear bleed out of the system and examine the leaks. We should be good to go.